Hello friends and fans of OSG. My name is Alyssa Walther and I'm a product engineer with OSG USA. On our site you'll see five videos. In each video I cover an OSG product common to the mold and dye industry. In these presentations I'll be introducing you to the product, features and benefits, target applications, cutting data, as well as the product offering. In this video, we're going to be going over the ADO drill series. Let's get started. The ADO drill series is one of OSG's go-to drills for multi-material drilling. It really, really does well in a multitude of different types of steels. So let's get into the features and benefits of this series. OSG utilizes both straight and wavy point designs. The wavy cutting edge produces a sharp cutting edge that reduces cutting forces by dividing into smaller multi-directional cutting forces. This results in lower thrust and stable torque. It also enhances chip separation to prevent the elongation of chips. Having a wide chip pocket space is essential to any drill because the flute pocket is the channel that chips climb up, if you will, in order to get out of the hole. So there's got to be enough space in the drill for the chips to roll around and make their way up the drill and out of the hole. Another feature of the ADO series is in what we call the middle margin. Some people call this a double margin as well, but there's a slight difference between a conventional double margin and the ADO OSG middle margin. So typically a double margin isn't necessary for the shorter, uh, more stubby drills, but we found that it becomes, becomes more of a benefit to the drill when we are starting to look at eight times D, 10 times D and longer drills, because the second set of margins is essentially a second set of hands that help to stabilize and keep the drill on center. So single margin is very common. It's, it's very universal across most drills that are shorter to regular length, but anything longer, uh, you should start considering a double margin to, to keep stability as optimal as possible on the drill. So now the difference between a conventional double margin and the ADO middle margin is that the second set of margins are on the middle of the land width of the drill, whereas a conventional double margin, one set of margin is on one side of the land and the other set of margins is on the other side of the land. Uh, the ADO middle margin, that second set of margins is in the middle of the land width of the drill, which effectively makes it so that the second set of margins are closer to the first set of margins. And now what that does is as the drill initially makes contact with the work material, the second set of margins engage quicker in a quicker amount of time than would a conventional double margin. So you're getting extra, that, that secondary help from the second, second set of uh, margins quicker. And the last feature and benefit of the ADO series is in the coating. So OSG has developed a new coating called Aegis coating. 
and it is the next generation coding over the previous ADO coding, whereas what we were able to do was increase the toughness of the coding. So nothing against what the coding was before, but we're always developing on top of what we've already done, creating newer and better and stronger types of product. So the Aegis coding is definitely no exception to that for OSG. We were able to increase the toughness of the coding, meaning it's more shock absorbing. It's not as readily chippable as the previous coding was. So we're very proud of this new Aegis coding that all of the ADO drills have on it. Let's get into some of the target applications of the ADO drill series. So as I said before, the ADO drills are suitable for a wide variety of work materials from your low, medium, high carbon steels to your alloy steels, tool steels, your stainless steels it's applicable in, very great in cast iron. Um, it can work in aluminum. It's not the sharpest drill we have for aluminum, but it's definitely going to work in aluminum. We can even apply it in some nickel and titanium alloys as well. We recommend these tools up to a certain Rockwell hardness, so we've seen some successes especially especially in the shorter lengths up to 40 to 50 to 50 Rockwell. It's suitable for a wide variety of industries because this is a drill series. We've got hundreds and hundreds of different sizes to choose from. It's just whatever size you need. This is our go-to our go-to drill for almost any application. OSG is very proud to say that we now have drills that will reach up to 50 times the diameter. So yeah, that's pretty long. I've seen a couple of these drills myself live and they are super, super long and they work great. So we've got anything from stub length two times D all the way up to 50 times D now in coolant through, of course. Uh, but we also do have a line that is also non coolant through as well. All right, so let's talk a little bit more specifically about deep hole drilling. So deep hole drilling OSG considers to be 10 times D up to 50, 50 times D. So the appropriate deep hole drilling procedure for these longer length drills is there's a couple steps that OSG likes to recommend to make sure that you are getting the straightest, more, most accurate deep hole that you possibly can. So the first thing we recommend is one, if you're coming into or you're drilling onto an unequal surface, surface, meaning you're drilling onto a round bar or, you're, or a convex surface or an angle of some sort, we recommend that you flatten that surface out first with the ADF drill, which is a flat bottom drill. So that flat bottom drill, it kind of looks like an end mill, but it's not an end mill, it's a, it's a drill, trust me. It's a drill that will leave a flat surface on whatever contoured area you're going to, to, to follow your deep hole drill with. So one, you can use that as, a, as the pilot drill as well. So in the event that you are already on a flat surface, you don't need to use a, a flat bottoming drill we do recommend you still take some sort of stub length drill or a pilot drill and drill a, uh, drill a pilot hole uh, slightly oversized from the diameter of the deep hole drill. So in this case, we recommend uh, 20 to 80 microns uh, larger than, the, than the, the drill itself and drill that pilot about one times D to three times D deep. So now you've got a pilot drill. Now you're going to come in with a deep hole drill. So to enter into the pilot hole that you've just made, we recommend that with the long drill, you start at a very slow RPM. So you bring your spindle close to the hole and have it spin at a very, very slow RPM, something like zero or, or a couple hundred RPM, just very, very calm, very slow, and get that into the pilot hole that you just made. Once inside the pilot hole, you can kick up your speed and then you start your drilling process at your recommended feed and speed with your coolant on. Once you get to the bottom of the hole, you can do your retract, retract it within you know one to three times D of the exit of the hole, and then turn the spindle speed back down to where it was when you first entered the hole and then remove the drill from the hole there. This will help to 
keep the drill straight and get it into the pilot hole as straight as possible because when sometimes when you kick up the speed too quickly and the drill is so long it'll actually move that just the the velocity of changing and kicking up the rpms will actually make the drill start to wobble before it even gets into the hole and we've seen that uh, cause many problems with deep hole drilling applications now since i told you we released the 40 and 50 times d drills the method is pretty much exactly the same as with the other deep hole drills the only difference here is because now we're drilling so much deeper we might have to recommend an intermittent length drill so if you're going to go if you're going to have a pilot drill but you need to go 50 times d if you find that the 50 times d for your setup and your machine really isn't getting you to exactly where you want to be with say straightness or something like that uh, we may recommend you take a pilot drill and then drill in with a 30 or a 20 times d drill and then come in with the 50 times g d drill and finish off the full depth of the hole otherwise our recommendation is going to be the same so the last thing we'll cover here in the ado presentation is the offering size so as you can see we have a bunch of different list numbers and each list number represents a different length to diameter flute length uh, series so we have anything from a two times d all the way up to a 50 times d as i said before so the first two list numbers 6300 and 6310 those are going to be our stub drills that are non-coolant through so for those of you who don't have a coolant through capability on your machine you still can get a quality ado drill in the non-coolant through varieties the rest of them are going to be coolant through and those coolant through drills are going to take you straight up to the 50 times d uh, drilling depths so you can see what the size range is for the most part they border somewhere around two millimeter all the way up to 20 millimeters a little bit smaller sizes in the 40 and 50 times d offerings but still a very robust offering we have them each list is a uh, is combined inch and metric so that's why you don't see an inch size offering and then a metric size offering so each list number is going to include both metric sizes as well as fractional sizes That will conclude this section of the ADO Drill Series presentation. Again, thank you. My name is Alyssa Walther, an OSG product engineer, and you have a great day.